guys, it's Sweet Moon Bubble. How are you? So, <clears throat> today I'm going to answer some interview questions regarding to my latest Christmas album that I just released, Blue Bubbly, um, released on my channel. And the reason I want to do answer some questions because I also want to share with you guys on um, my journey, my creative process, and also how I can improve on these processes. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try and improve, so that's why I wanna answer some questions. So question number one, why did you wanna do a, a Christmas album? I started with wanting to do a Christmas single, but because I actually have a lot of feelings, a lot of different things I want to express so I thought that an album would be more appropriate for that so that's why I decided to do an album so question two how did you come up with the name of your album um, so that was completely by accident so I just wrote in my notes that oh I wish I can write something that is a little blue a little bubbly and then I was like oh blue bubbly and then I was like whoa I'm just gonna name my album blue bubbly that sounds amazing <laughs> question three what were your intentions for the album so for the main side of the album I wanted to make bubblegum pop something a little bit like bubblegum pop uh, and something a little bit retro in between as well um, that's because I wanted to write an album that gave more good and positive feelings. It's something I rarely do <laughs> nowadays, so um, it's definitely... Uh, I wanted to do something different for, <laughs> for a long time, and yeah, I wanted to give the feeling, like in the album, like uh, everything is happy. Um, not like everything is happy and rainbows, like not like, um, oh my gosh, everything is happy, 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 but more like, oh, my life is a mess, but I still want to be happy. I'm still, um, accepting. I'm still accepting of who I am. I'm happy with where I am right now. I miss having that innocent feeling in an album it really um gave me gave me nostalgia because i haven't written a song that about positivity in quite a while for side b uh it's a bit more mature it's a bit more um it's a bit more deep a bit more mature a bit more sad uh hence but blue so the first album is like bubbly and this b side is like blue for B-side is more about um, it's much, much more serious so it's about the loss of identity and um, feelings of loss in life um, when things don't go your way and also confusion in love number three was all the sounds in the album completely self-produced so um, I would say like 90% of the album is self-produced. The only loops I've used were the drum loops because I suck at making drums, drum beats. And also um, the, the very last song, Matcha Late, I use lots of loops for that. Like it's literally, I would say like, except for my vocals, everything else were loops. Uh, just because I wanted to try something different. Number six, can you share some of the influences for each of the songs in the album? Um, for my main album, uh, this might sound a little bit random, but Affluenza by Conan Gray. <laughs> I heard that song randomly on Apple Music once and I loved its beat. It's like to, 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 to the retro vibe of it. Um, it's very interesting. Um, I wanted to make make the album funky and lo-fi, but I think um, I would say this release is probably not my final version, and I would, yeah, I would only change more of that. Miku's Dreaming Choo Choo is also um, 
an inspiration for Smurf Ice Cream in the main album. That's why Smurf Ice Cream sounded very happy and joyful. Um, back then, I think three years ago at, at music school, I did an analysis on, um, on Dreaming Choo Choo by Miku and it was all major chords and yeah, I tried to use my memory of what I've learned and apply that to Smurf Ice Cream. It might sound, I think Smurf Ice Cream sounded a little bit like musically strange and dramatic because I've been watching opera with uh, it might sound dramatic because I've been watching opera like Midsummer Night's Dream opera with my friends and I think I unconsciously got the dissonant music and sudden change in mood from <laughs> for that song also Mad at Disney I wrote that down on my list because the chords are simple but it's catchy and it's good it's it's simple but it's good and I wanted to make the songs in this album simple um, not overly complicated more simple catchy and just clean I guess for side B there's not as much influences uh, except Matcha Late which is the last song for the last song Matcha Late um, you'll be surprised but I was inspired by Wenji's Oh I Do and in the song she used a strange vocoder yeah in that song Oh I Do she kind of used a very interesting vocoder for her harmonies and it sounds so cool it just sounds so weird and and pretty at the same time it's like eerie but like her voice is a synth that's how it sounded like and i tried to do a little bit of that in my matcha late song and that kind of worked for matcha late actually um i was freaked out i think i was meant to make it more pretty than freaky so i'm gonna have to focus on that as well i definitely used the idea the vocoder harmony idea for um more than one song like strawberry lake i used that vocoder idea as well um you could hear in the background there was a little bit of that vocoder Number seven, if you spent more time on the album, what are some specific things you'd like to change or add? Firstly, definitely the vocoder thing. Um, but it's difficult. The vocoder is difficult because I need to get it to sound like a synth and there's really not much options. <laughs> I don't really don't really know how to do it yet. So I might do a bit of research to see how to use a vocoder or something to make your voice sound more like a synth because it sounds amazing. Um, I haven't added any harmonies yet, so yeah, I probably might vocode my harmonies. Blue Bubbly would be a good place to start because sometime I did sing some harmonies towards the end of Blue Bubbly, but I didn't um, put vocoders on it because I was kind of rushing. I also want to put more stuff in the song, make it more funky and also lo-fi. So I read somewhere that um, funk music depends on the rhythm. So I want to focus on making the rhythm it, it more like rhythmically funky with the um, instruments I already have. And lo-fi, um, yeah, just make it sound more clean and lo-fi-ish. Also re-singing my vocals because I feel like... Um, my current microphone is kind of poor because it doesn't have a pop filter and there's a lot of sibilance whenever when I sing into it and the enunciations are hard because sometimes it takes me ages and sometimes it depends on my mood to get the enunciations out a tweak on the current instruments because um, I feel like uh, this can be more they can be more done on the instruments to make the songs more coherent number eight what's your favorite song from the album <laughs> so there there's um 
much a late, surprisingly. I loved it because it was weird. I thought it wouldn't work because I threw a lot of elements into it, but I liked it. Strawberry Lake, definitely. Um, I think it's because I already planned to have Strawberry Lake as the best song in the album because it was like a week ago I found an old poem I wrote in primary school and the song Strawberry Lake was based on that poem I wrote from primary school. The poem was called Dumbo Lake and um, in the poem I wrote about how everybody is dumb and how the water is pink so that's how I got Strawberry Lake and I, I wanted to reinvent I wanted to write a song kind of inspired by that like um, Strawberry Lake for me um, what I had in mind was about this place where I escaped from reality um, it was kind of like my desire to not want to even be in reality sometimes like this place that i just want to be in and not be in reality anymore and um yeah but yeah that, that was my favorite number nine can you share some production techniques you've used for blue bubbly start with your favorite one then another one you've struggled with and then maybe another one another technique you wished you would have used but is currently too difficult for you all right so um my favorite one would be um, the cutting one. So in Blue Bubbly, I was like, love me not, and then I cut it. And I learned that technique, that splicing technique from music school, but I never got to actually use it in actual, um, actual album. And uh, a, 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 one, a technique I've struggled with is equalizing my voice. Um, I think it partially has to do with my microphone and also equalizing instruments so that they sound coherent. Um, it just takes a bit of um, patience to get that better. And um, something difficult definitely is uh, one, one I want, lo would love to learn is how to make your voice sound like a synth, like that vocoder feeling. And oh, I do. And um, it's uh i still need to to work on it and um something else is that recently i saw this post by suran and um it's so cool it's about like um intricate volume editing and i've never done it before and i would love to do it so i might do it um in my remaster version of this album definitely try that out. Question 10. Were there any songs that struck a chord in you? Yes, there was. The song that struck a chord in me was um, Tiramisu from uh, B-Side, Blue Bubbly. Um, as I said before, B-Side from Blue Bubbly, Blue Bubbly is more serious than the main album songs. That's why I didn't include it into the main album. I didn't want it to ruin the positive vibe. But Tiramisu is about um, losing yourself. It's about losing your identity. And it's also about being in so many situations that you don't really recognize yourself anymore. You're kind of questioning like, who am I and who am I actually and um I feel like um every time I hear it it, it hits me <laughs> and um uh, also Ice Pop from uh main album surprisingly I spent it's the last song in Blue Bubbly but I spend the least time on Ice Pop um it also took the least effort to make but it's so uplifting because it's positive and yeah it gives me that positive boost every time i hear it question 11 is will you publish a final version of the album at christmas wink wink <laughs> yeah maybe maybe i will i don't know 
but yeah if I do it'll be like a gift for my listeners so maybe this release is just like the demo release yeah and it's really good to um document your progress and to see how you improve and I really like that I like documenting everything I used to do and I have all my old demo songs and it's good to document your progress number 12 do you have anything else planned for Christmas i.e. content yes I do and um, it's gonna be so exciting um, I think it's on the 20 I scheduled it on the 20th but I will be doing my Christmas live on Twitch I'm gonna do a Christmas singing live on Twitch and um, yeah it's gonna be cool I'm gonna upload it on my channel and it's gonna be um, I'm gonna practice a bit for it and, and it's gonna be so exciting so yeah that's it thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video bye